If reading, writing and proofreading are parts of your day that fill you with dread, then you probably want to keep watching. For anyone grappling with text-based tasks, text-to-speech can massively improve your speed and accuracy. So picture this, you've got a load of coursework research to get through, a huge contract or a never ending report. And rather than sitting there with your eyes transfixed on the screen, you can get text to speech to read your documents back to you, allowing you to sit back and make the reading process a much more passive experience, actively take more detailed notes or get on with something else while you listen to your documents. So whether you're dyslexic, dyspraxic, or just have a mind numbing amount of reading to do, there are loads of situations where your ears are actually better than your eyes when dealing with text. Now it may sound like a simple concept, but I've been using text to speech for a while and it's made a massive difference to my speed and accuracy. And if you'd like to check out some of the software that I'm talking about in this video, just check in the description below for links to some of the software that we'll be using today. So how does it all work? Generally, most text-to-speech packages have a toolbar that allows you to interact with the interface and all the other tools that come packaged with your text-to-speech program. So you've got one here, which is by Text Help. Um, we can get rid of that. And then there's another one here, which is Clara Read. So similar kind of thing, buttons uh, that you can press. And most importantly, the play and stop buttons here. At its most basic, text-to-speech can be set to automatically read back text as you type or sentences when you add a full stop. Back. Text-to-speech read stuff back. This is really useful if you regularly mix up words or make mistakes. As a filmmaker, I'm always mixing up the words shoot and shot, and it's something that my eyes will never see when I look at it on paper. But with text-to-speech, it's obvious. Today the shot starts at 7 p.m. Today the shoot starts at 7 p.m. If you find punctuation difficult, it's really useful to hear someone or something reading your work back so you have a much better idea of flow. I've been to France, Germany, Spain, Ecuador and Italy. I've been to France, Germany, Spain, Ecuador and Italy. Another way people like to use this software is to proofread a finished document. Just place the cursor where you want the software to start reading and listen till you hear something that doesn't quite sound right. Stop playback, make the correction and move on. It's mid-January and for many of us our New Year's resolutions are still full swing. In. Are still in full swing. Another common feature that comes with text-to-speech is the ability to change the voice. Some people find that different tones or accents make it easy to understand or more realistic. So there are usually multiple male and female voices in different accents for you to choose from. I like the Irish voice because I find it soothing. Sean, let me sing you a relaxing lullaby. There's also homophone checkers. Words that sound the same that are spelt differently are sometimes not picked up by built-in spell checkers. The homophone checker will pick up even the most tenuous homophones, just another quick check that allows you to improve the accuracy of your writing. The text to audio function that comes with most of these packages allows you to turn whole documents into mp3 files, allowing you to listen to documents where it wouldn't be practical to read. For instance, you can turn your emails into mp3s and add them to your phone to listen to them through your car stereo. Or you can put that article you didn't have time to read or your revision notes on an mp3 player and listen back while you're on a run or in the gym. For others the new year is a time to focus on their careers getting that promotion, moving to a... Other functions bundled with many text-to-speech packages include word prediction, PDF readers, advanced spell checkers, study skills, accessibility aids, and mind mapping, but we'll touch on some of those in later videos. Finally, there's a few different types of text-to-speech package, but the three most popular are these. Universal. These generally have some kind of floating toolbar, meaning you can use their functions in any program that you're using. Add-ins, which add text-to-speech functionality to the ribbon of a program like Microsoft Word. Standalone, because these are word processing applications in their own right, you generally have to use them instead of something like Google Docs or Microsoft Word, or you have to cut and paste your text into the application. These are sometimes free or work on a freemium model, meaning you need to purchase upgrades to get full functionality. If you found this beginner's guide useful, or would like to check out our reviews for individual packages, or you'd like to check out our beginner's guides for other assistive technology, make sure you subscribe to this channel or on our blog. But until next time, keep it cod past.